It's been three days since the planes came over Knox County and dropped gases in the area. With the radio messages coming in, we know that Eugene has no way of leaving. All the roads have been destroyed, bridges have been blown, and everybody in the area should be dead. Eugene knows this is not the case though as yesterday we came across another possible survivor of the gas. Last night Eugene realised that being his usual introverted self won't help him through the next six months and on the morning of day four he began putting together clippings of everything that had happened over the past couple of days with the hopes of piecing this mystery together. Day Zero ended with a plane that was sent by the American government. In their words, this was sent to contain the virus, but what that virus is, he wasn't quite sure of yet. On day one, Eugene found a number of bodies, some still alive and some that had already passed. It seems like they were killed off from the gas that was dropped from the planes. On day two, he came across the individual that looked like he'd been beaten up or some sort of reaction to the gas. And finally on day three, Eugene spotted another survivor around the trailer park. From the small amount of information he had, he was living off scraps, but it could come together as time goes on. For now though, Eugene decided his focus would be on setting himself up for survival, making his home somewhere he could see out whatever time he had left. There was a lot of property to cover in the area, but food could run out, and with other survivors from yesterday, there could be competition. Eugene decided his first line of defence would be securing the trailer, and the key to this would be the Riverside Factory. Eugene knew the factory like the back of his hand, as we found out over a week ago. He'd worked there for some time. There were all sorts of supplies, from planks, tools, nails, and hopefully something to light a cigarette. Eugene grabbed some food from the fridge, then headed to the car, and took the small journey across the trailer park, over the road, and towards the rear of the factory. Once he arrived, he headed through the rear door, opened the roller shutter, and drove his truck inside. He shut both doors just in case there was anyone else around that may see him, then got to work grabbing all the relevant items he came for. Eugene did numerous trips backwards and forwards, grabbing a number of tools, garden equipment, a trusty crowbar, and seeds to plant food. He also came across a wood axe, so that went in the back of the trailer ready to chop down some trees. Once the truck was full, Eugene headed into the office to see if he could locate some matches or a lighter. But with no luck, it was time to get back to the warehouse. Eugene remembered the factory had just purchased some welding equipment a couple of weeks prior, and with the lack of storage at the trailer, he decided to attempt to deconstruct the shelves. They would have been an ideal storage space, but he failed miserably on all three. He instead decided that the sheets he had placed over the windows at the trailer were not sufficient enough for security, so he took some of the metal bars and metal sheets for the extra defence. This was in fact the intended use for the factory when they purchased the equipment, due to the local teenagers vandalising the place numerous times. Once he loaded the rest of the loot into the truck, he opened the shutter and backed the car out. After a hectic day over at the warehouse, Eugene decided it was time to head back to the trailer. But with no cigarettes in two days, he stopped off by the main factory office to see if he could finally find a light source. After checking around a couple of offices, he finally came across matches and a sense of happiness fell over him as he hopped in the car and made his way home. It was a short drive, but with a sense of accomplishment, Eugene pulled up at the trailer and moved all of the loot inside. It took a few hours due to all the sheets and bars, but finally once it was done, he enjoyed a cigarette in the kitchen and sat in the bedroom reading a book he came across in a locker at the factory titled Book of the Dead. Today Eugene spent the day at the trailer. It was all about making this place more secure so he could feel safe from any possible survivors that might have been in the area. After yesterday's big loot run at the factory, Eugene had everything he needed to make this place a fortress, but his skills with a propane torch would let him down. Once he was up and had breakfast, he got straight to work. Welding mask on, propane torch in hand, he began putting bars on each of the windows. His initial idea was to add metal sheets, but with them brings no visibility, and he wanted access to opening the curtains so he could look out to see if there was anybody out there. As we mentioned, with Eugene's lack of skills in welding, around midday Eugene finally got the third set of bars up. He took his time, but getting it right was key, and by early evening, Eugene had managed to cover up all of the windows. He did, however, have to cover two of them with metal sheets, as he didn't have enough bars, but he should have enough visibility if required. After a long day, Eugene decided to enjoy a nice cold beer and a cigarette in the bedroom, before continuing late into the night reading the book on foraging he'd started a few days prior. After getting all of the windows secured on the trailer yesterday, today's main focus for Eugene was preparing the wall around the trailer, to add that little bit more security. His day started off with a quick shower to refresh after all the manual labour from yesterday, 
then a bite to eat in the kitchen before grabbing the wood axe that he'd managed to pull from the factory. Eugene started by chopping a couple of trees that had been grown around the trailer over the years that he'd lived there. He then headed out to the west where the forest area was. He spent the morning just chopping down trees. Eugene had good stamina due to all the weekends he'd spent out and about working out, walking and climbing. Around midday he headed back to the trailer for a bite to eat and a rest. Then headed straight back out to continue cutting down the trees. Eugene had dabbed his hand into some carpentry in the past over at the factory. He was no expert by any means but putting a secure wall up couldn't be that much of an issue could it? Eugene grabbed the truck then headed back to his logs. Saw equipped and began making some planks ready for the wall. How many he needed, he wasn't sure, but it was a start at least. He went late into the evening, collecting the planks, putting them into the truck and dropping them around the trailer. And by late evening, Eugene had collected everything he needed to get started tomorrow. But first, he needed some rest. To save you the time of watching Eugene knock nails into wood, we'll fast forward a day. Eugene spent the majority of yesterday around the trailer, knocking up the frames to his wall and adding in a door for some personal access. There wasn't really much else to say, but I'll let Eugene give you a guided tour. He spent pretty much every hour of yesterday right until midnight, collecting more logs from the forest ready to get things completed today. As exhausting as it was, the feeling of having some security finally was beginning to excite Eugene. Eugene headed inside to grab his saw, hammer and nails and headed back outside. That was when he heard a distant sound of a helicopter. He went to the side of the trailer and as the sound began to get closer and closer, he darted inside, into the house and hid in the bedroom. The helicopter was dead over the trailer. Eugene was panicking. Had all the work he completed yesterday drawn their attention as it flew over? He began to look from the windows to see if he could see anything there, but there was nothing in sight. He continued round and round the trailer, but he saw nothing. His only thought was to sit in the trailer and hopefully ride it out. The helicopter kept coming and going. It would fly away, then fly back. Eugene had been stuck in the trailer for a number of hours now. And finally, after six hours, the chopper left. Eugene checked the windows again just one more time, and with nothing in sight, it was time to get back to work. Eugene shot out the trailer and grabbed a pile of planks. Getting the walls up now is the number one thing on Eugene's agenda. He spent all afternoon putting nails into the planks, and by 8 o'clock that evening, he'd done about 50% of the wall. Eugene grabbed another stack of planks to continue around the rear of the trailer, and as he began to turn the corner, that's when he spotted someone banging against the bars that he'd fitted to the kitchen window. As he got closer, he recognised the look. The same look of a man he saw in a trailer a number of evenings ago. He panicked as they saw him and he ran back to the door. Once inside he locked it, closed the curtains and headed straight to the bedroom. As he sat there in silence, there was a bang on the steel plate Eugene had fitted on the window. Eugene's breaths became shorter. He began to get warm and dizzy. Panic began to set in and... Eugene collapsed to the floor. 